In this Blender tutorial, I'll show you how to create this procedural white brick material. And after we create the procedural material, I'll show you how to join the material together into a custom node group so you can control the material settings. So let's just run through these. So we have the overall scale to change the size of the bricks. And then we also have some different colors here. So color one and two. Then we also have the color brightness. And because these are light bricks, I did want to add that color brightness so you can make the bricks darker or lighter. Then we also have this cool ambient occlusion value you. And so this is if you're creating some sort of brick building and you want to make it look like maybe there's some dirt in the corners here in the cracks and crevices, you can turn up this ambient occlusion value to make it darker there in the cracks and make it look like there's some dirt. Or you can turn it down if you don't want to use it. Then we have the roughness of the material, but I'd leave this pretty high because brick is pretty rough. And then we have two bump strengths. So we have the noise bump strength. So if you want to make it look very rough and bumpy, you could turn that up. And then we also have the bricks bump strength to pop out the bricks if you want to make those bricks come out more. And if you'd like to help support me and this YouTube channel, then a great way to do that is by purchasing the procedural material on my Gumroad store and my Patreon page. I'll have the links in the description. And if you like using procedural materials in your projects, then definitely check out my Ultimate Blender Procedural Material Pack. And my Ultimate Material Pack comes with all of my procedural materials, pre-set up for Blender's asset browser with custom thumbnails, sorted catalogs, and customizable node groups. And you can also check out my procedural material packs, which are packs of 10 materials. And if you'd like to learn how to create more procedural materials, then definitely check out my Blender procedural material tutorial playlist here on YouTube. All the links are in the description. So I'll now show you the 3D setup if you want to set up the Blender file the same way that I have. So I'm going to add some objects to preview the material on. So I'll press Shift A, and I'm going to go here to Mesh, and I'm going to add an Icosphere. And I like to add an Icosphere because they're nice and round and have even geometry. Now right behind me, if you click on that arrow there for the Add Icosphere settings, I'm going to turn these subdivisions up to 6 so that it is nice and smooth and round. And then I will just close the Add Icosphere settings. So I now want to scale this down to a better size because the default objects in Blender are a little bit larger than an average human, so this is like really big. So I'm going to scale this object down. I'll type in 0.2 and then enter, and then I will press Control A and apply the scale so this is the object's new default size. And then using the object context menu, I'll shade the object smooth so that it is nice and smooth. Then I'll press Shift A, I'll go to Mesh, and I'm going to add a cube. And again, with this cube, I'll scale it down by 0.2 and hit Enter. And I'll bring the cube down, and then maybe bring both of these objects up a bit. And then I'll select the cube, press Control A, and also apply the scale. And I'm adding a cube because I want to be able to preview what the ambient occlusion will look like in the creases and crevices. So this would be for something like if I were creating a brick building, and I wanted the brick building to look like it kind of has dirt in the creases. So I'm going to move this cube over a bit move it over here and I'll go into edit mode and I'm going to click here to go to the face select. I'll select this face and I'll extrude it out. Then I'll select this face and extrude it out so that we basically have this little crevice right there. And then I'll go back to object mode. And then with this cube selected, if you click right over here to go to the modifiers, I'm going to click on add modifier and I'm going to add a bevel just so that we have a bevel on the edges there. But then the bevel is way too big. So let's turn the amount way down to a very small number. And then let's also turn the segments way up to like a five. And then if you zoom way in closely, I need to use the object context menu to shade this smooth so the edges are smooth. And just make that a tiny little bevel there. Now as for the lighting, I added in this Machine Shop 02 1K HDRI. So this is a free HDRI from polyhaven.com. And I'll have the link in the description if you'd like to download the same HDRI to get some nice realistic lighting and reflections. So once you download the HDRI, you can go here to the world properties and you can click here on the yellow dot next to color and you can choose environment texture. And then just click on the open button and open up the HDRI. And then here on the strength, I just turned it down to a 0.8 so it's not quite as bright. And then I'm going to hold down the Z button and I'm going to move my mouse up into the rendered mode so I can see this in the rendered view. And you can see this is what the HDRI lighting gives us. Now you can't actually see the HDRI in the background here in my scene. And that's because if you go over here to the render properties, you can open up the film tab right here and you can check mark the transparent button. And so that way you can't see the HDRI in the background, but it's still going to light the scene. And I do like that because that way the HDRI isn't quite as distracting. And then also if you close the film tab, 
and you open up the color management, I'm going to be using the view transform of filmic and I'll change the look to very high contrast. And that'll just pop out the colors and make the render look nicer. Now as far as the rendering engine goes, I am going to be using the cycles rendering engine because I am going for realism. However, you could also do this tutorial in Eevee. The material will work fine in Eevee. If you are using the Eevee rendering engine though, when you change it over to Eevee, you just need to make sure to turn on the ambient occlusion so that it will use the ambient occlusion that we're going to be adding to the material. If you're using cycles render, the ambient occlusion will automatically work. So you can see right here, I'm in the shading workspace. So I have the 3D viewport right over here and I'm in the rendered mode. And then I also have the shader editor right here. So I'll just click on new to add a new material. And right here on the material name, I'll rename this to white brick. And then I'm also going to click and drag and I'm going to drop this material onto this object here so they both have the same material. And then I will also be using the Node Wrangler add-on to preview the different nodes. So if you don't have the Node Wrangler enabled, you can click on edit, you can go to the preferences, and then over there on the add-ons tab just search for Node Wrangler and you can check mark the Node Wrangler add-on and I'll show you how to use the Node Wrangler in the video. So I'll start by pressing Shift A, then I'll go here to the search, and I'm going to start by adding the brick texture. Let's drop the brick texture here and then using the feature of the node wrangler I can control shift and select the brick texture and if you hold down the control and shift key and then select different nodes that is going to preview the node on the object and make sure you're in the rendered mode so you can see it. Now with this brick texture selected I'm also going to press control T and that is going to add the texture coordinate and mapping nodes after the brick texture and so the texture coordinate and mapping is telling the brick texture how it's going to be placed on the object. Now you Usually for procedural materials, I like to use the object coordinates so you can put the object into the vector. However, for the brick texture, this doesn't work so well because you can't see the bricks on every single side. You can only see it on the top one here. So I am instead going to use the UV. So we'll plug the UV up to the vector. And so now it's going to use the UV mapping of each object to place the brick texture on the object. So now just to fix the UV mapping, I'm going to leave this one how it is. But then this object here, I will go into edit mode and I will select the entire object and then I will click U to unwrap. And for an object like this, which is very simple and blocky, I'm just going to do the smart UV project and then click on OK. So you can now see we have a nice UV unwrap and you can see the bricks are all going sideways over here. And then you can also see the bricks here and over here. And if you wanted to, you could go into Blender's UV editor and you could rotate the UVs and scale them. And I do have a beginner tutorial on UV unwrapping. So if you'd like to check out that tutorial, I will have the link in the description. But this UV unwrap will work great for what I'm doing. So now let's change the settings of the brick texture. So I want to make this very small, so I'm going to turn the scale to 30 on the brick. And then here on this color, I want it to be the same color as this top one here. So I'm going to click and drag, and then I can actually drop this color onto the bottom color so that they're the same color. And then the mortar color, that's going to be fully black. Now here on the mortar size, I want to change this to a 0 0.055 so that it is actually a bit thicker. And then I do want to make the mortars more smooth. So here on this value, I'll turn this to a 0.8. You can actually drag this out so it's a bit bigger. So the mortar smooth, I'll turn to a 0.8 and then I will leave the other settings how they are. Now this brick texture is very smooth and so I want to add a noise texture to distort those black areas so that it looks more organic and natural and it makes it look a bit more worn. So I'm going to click and drag to select these two nodes here and drag them back and then here in the middle I'll press shift A and I'll go to the search and I'll search for a noise texture and we can just drop the noise texture right here and then let's take the mapping vector and we can plug that up to the vector of the noise texture and then I can control shift and select the noise texture to preview it. So now let's change the settings. So I'm going to turn the scale to 100 so it is much smaller. I'm also going to turn the detail all the way to the max of 15. And then here on this roughness, I will turn the roughness to a 0.55 so it's a little bit more rough. So I now want to mix the noise texture into the vector and the vector is controlling how the brick texture is placed on the object and so the noise texture will distort it. So to do this, I'll press Shift A and I'll go to the search and I'm going to search for the mix color. And let's drop the mix color right here and we're actually going to put it in this wire between the mapping and the vector. Now I'm going to take the noise texture factor and I'm going to put that into color B and then this mapping vector is going to be into color A. So now I can control shift and select the bricks texture to preview it and I want to click on this mix here and I'm going to change the type to linear light instead. So I can now drag the factor around and you can see if the factor is turned to zero the noise texture isn't distorting it at all but then as I drag up the factor it's going to distort it more and more. So I want the factor to be a very very small number. 
So I'm gonna turn the factor to a 0 0.002 so that it is a very small number. So now if I zoom in here to the bricks, you can see it's mostly retaining its shape, but there's a little bit of noise on the edges. So that will make it look more organic and natural. So I now wanna create the colors for the brick. So I'll press Shift A and I'll go to the search and I'm gonna search for another mix color and let's drop this mix color after the brick texture and I can control Shift and select the mix to preview it. So I want this brick texture to be going into the factor and then and here on this mix, we can make the two colors. So here on color A, I'm gonna make this kind of like a grayish color. And if you wanna use the exact same hex value that I'm using for color A, then here on the hex, you can punch in 7F7877. So that's the exact color I'm using for color A. And then here on color B, I'm just gonna make this fully bright. So you can now see that the mortar is kind of gray, but then the bricks are very light. So I can now click and drag to select these nodes and bring them over here. And before I plug the mix into the base color, there's still two more things that I wanna to add to this color. So I wanna add some overall noise to the material, and then I also wanna add that ambient occlusion. So I'm first gonna add the noise. So I'll click on this mix, I'll press Shift D to duplicate it and drop it here after this one. And I'll put this mix result into color A, and then for color B, I'm gonna go back here to this noise texture, and I'll take the factor and I'll put that into color B. So now we're mixing in that noise. And then I can drag the factor to have more of the bricks or more of the noise. And here on the factor, I'm gonna turn this to like a 0.75, so you can see the bricks, but the noise is kind of mixed in there. Now I also wanna mix in the ambient occlusion. So right up here, I'll press Shift A, and I'll go to the search, and I'll search for the ambient occlusion. Let's drop the ambient occlusion right here, and I'm gonna control shift and select the ambient occlusion to preview it. And you can see that it's right there. It's kind of dark there. And here on the distance value, I will turn this up to 10. Now I mentioned this earlier, but if you're using the EV rendering engine, it will work in EV. However, you need to make sure you check mark the ambient occlusion so that you can see it in Blender EV. But I'm using cycles, so the ambient occlusion will already work on default. Now I wanna be able to see the ambient occlusion better, so I'll press shift A and I'll go to the search. And I'm gonna search for this color ramp and I'll put the color ramp after the ambient occlusion. So if I now drag the black tab and the white tab together, it's gonna to make it more contrasty. So I'll drag the black tab here and then the white tab kind of to about there. So you can now see in the crevices and creases, you can see those dark values. And also when you drag two objects together, when the objects are closer together, you're gonna to be able to see the ambient occlusion. And if you don't want that to happen, you can choose the only local and that way the objects won't affect each other. Um, but I actually wanna leave this off because if I have two objects close together, I do want there to be kind of a darker area to make it look like there's some dirt kind of in those creases. So I now want to mix in the ambient occlusion. So I'll click and drag to box select these nodes. I'll bring them back and I'm going to take this mix here. I'll press shift D to duplicate it and drop it here. And I want to take this color ramp and I'm gonna put that into color B. Then here on this mix, I'm gonna put that into color A. Now I just want to add the dark values. So where the ambient occlusion is, that's dark. So I just wanna add those dark parts. So I'm gonna click on the mix here and I'm gonna change this to darken and then I can control shift and select it to preview it. So now if I drag the factor, you can see it's just adding the dark values on top of the other texture. So here on the factor, I'm gonna turn this to 0.4 so that it is very subtle, but if you wanna turn it up and make the ambient occlusion stronger, you could turn the factor up. So I can now take this darken and I can put the result into the base color of the principal shader and I can control shift and select the principal shader to preview it. And I can kind of zoom out here to see how that is looking. So there's a few more things that I wanna to add to the material. So this roughness value, I'm gonna turn this up to like a 0.8 so that it is more rough. And then I also wanna add some data into the normal to give it some bump. So I'm first gonna take this brick texture here, I'll take the color and I'll plug that into the normal to make it bumpy. Now you can see there's some weird shading issues and that's because I need to press shift A, I need to go to the search, and I need to search for a bump node. And the bump node is going to convert the color data into normal data that the shader can use. So I'm gonna drop the bump node in between the brick texture color and then also the normal. So this brick texture color needs to be going into the height value of the bump and then the height will convert it to normal data so then the bump can go into the normal. So now you can see it actually looks like the bricks are popping out. And here on the strength, I'm gonna turn this down to like a 0.3 so that it's not quite as bumpy. But now the bricks are popping out. 
Then I also want to click on the bump node and I want to press shift D to duplicate it and drop it here. And I'm going to put this normal into the other normal. So this way we can mix multiple bump maps together. So then in this bump, I'm going to be adding the noise. So I'm going to take this noise texture factor and I'm going to plug that into the height value of this bump right here. So then if I turn the strength up, you can see it's adding all that noisy bump to the material. And I'm just going to turn the strength of this one to a 0.2 so it is much less strong. But you can see it's still giving some bump over the material. And so that is it. That is the finished procedural material. So I'm now going to show you how to join it together into a custom node group. So I'm going to click and drag to box select all these nodes here, but I'm not going to select the material output or the texture coordinate, but all the nodes in between. So I'm now going to press Control G and Control G is going to join the nodes together into a node group. So if I press the N key, that will open up the side panel and I have the inputs and the outputs. So here on this output, I like to just rename it to shader because I like that better. So then if you hit the tab key with the node group selected, that's going to go in and out of the node group. So then I can click on this texture coordinate here, drag this over, and then here on the node group, I just want to make it a bit bigger. So I'm going to click and drag to make that bigger, and this material output, I'll drag that over as well. And then I want to rename the node group, so I'm going to rename it to the same material name. So the material is named White Bricks. So now I can click on the node group and hit the tab key to go into the node group, and we can add all the custom values to the inputs. So right here we can take this group input, and we can drag it down here, and we can plug all the values into it. So I want to be able to control the overall size of the entire material. So we can take this scale here from the mapping and we can plug that into the extra socket. And because the mapping is plugged up to all the other textures, that'll control the entire scale of the entire material. Now, if you go out of the node group, you can see there are actually three values. So to make it one value instead, I'll go back into the node group. I'll click on the scale here on the inputs. And on the type here, I want to change it to float instead. So it is one single value. And then here on the default value, I can turn that to one and I can go out of the node group. And then here on the scale, I want to turn that back to one because it was just turned to zero. So now you can see that is changing the entire size of the material. So let's go back into the node group. And real quick, if you're wondering why I don't have the texture coordinate in the brick texture node group, that is because maybe in some cases you might want to use the object coordinates instead. Um, so I want to make that available for the user. So if they want to use the UVs, they can, or they can use the object coordinates instead if they want to. So let's click on the node group and hit the tab key to go back into the node group. So now I'm going to be adding in the colors. So I'll click on the group input here and I'm going to drag it over and I can take both of these colors here on the mix. I'll put A into the extra socket and also B put that into the extra socket. And then I can click on these to rename them. So I'll rename this one to color one. And then this one here, I'll double click on this and I'll rename it to color two. Now I also want to be able to control the color brightness. So to do that, I'll press shift A and I'll go to the search and I'll search for the hue saturation value. And let's put that in between the darken and the principled shader. So we can now take this value here and let's drag it over and I'll put that into the group input. So this value is going to make all the colors lighter or darker. So if I go out of the node group now, you can see that value is just going to make it brighter or darker. So if I go back into the node group, I'm going to double click on this to rename it and I'll rename it to color brightness. Now I also want to be able to control the amount of ambient occlusion. So this dark in here, that's controlling the amount of ambient occlusion. So we can take the factor, we can drag that into the extra socket here. And then if I double click on this to rename it, I'll rename this one to ambient occlusion. And then finally, I want to be able to control the roughness and the bump strength. So let's drag the group input over here and I can take this roughness value. Let's put that to the extra socket. I can make this a bit smaller and then let's drag this down here. And this first bump strength, that is the bricks bump strength. So I'll put the strength there into the extra socket. And if I double click on this to rename it, I want to rename this one to bricks bump strength. And then this one here, this is controlling the noise. So let's put the strength into the extra socket. And if I double click on this, I'll rename it to noise bump strength. So I'll now click on the group input and I can just like drag it back here. I'll hit the tab key to go out of the node group and the end key to close the side panel. And there is the finished material. So we can now just review the material. So we have the overall scale. We also have the different colors. So we have colors one and we also have colors two. And then we also have the colors brightness. Then we have the ambient occlusion. You can make this stronger or less strong. We also have the roughness of the material. And then we have the bricks bump strength and the noise bump strength. 
So that's going to be it for this tutorial, so I hope you enjoyed this, I hope you found it helpful, and thank you for watching. And if you'd like to help support me and this YouTube channel, then you can purchase this material on my Gumroad store, I'll have the link in the description. And another great way to help support the channel is by joining my Patreon page, and when you join my Patreon page you'll get lots of different Blender content, like procedural materials, different tutorial files, artwork project files, and 3D models and assets, and more Blender content on my Patreon page. And if you like using procedural materials in your artwork, then definitely check out my Ultimate Blender Procedural Material Pack, and my Ultimate Material Pack comes with all of my procedural materials, and they're pre-set up for the asset browser with custom thumbnails, sorted catalogs, and customizable node groups. And if you'd like to learn how to create more procedural materials, then definitely check out my Blender Procedural Material Tutorial playlist here on YouTube, all the links are in the description. But I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and thank you for watching.